Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and um, agreeing to this interview. I think that uh, for readers and also viewers of Civil G, it will be very uh, interesting um, to find out more about how NATO-Georgia relations progress. Um, so it's the end of the year and uh, it's a good time to take stock and to sum up. Um, so the first question I would like to start with uh, will be, how did NATO-Georgia relations develop in 2023 uh, as we try to take stock? Of them. And uh, um, in this context, just yesterday and the day before, Georgia hosted the Secretary General's Special Representative for the South Caucasus and um, uh, Central Asia, Javier Colomina. Uh, what can you tell us about this visit as well, um, beyond the official information that we have? Uh, what's your assessment and what were the main results of the visit? Well, thank you very much for having me, first of all. It's a pleasure to, uh, to be with uh, with you. Um, indeed, it is the end of the year and uh, it has been an, a very momentous and busy year for all of us, uh, for Georgia, for NATO and for the international community. Uh, but I think what's important to uh, underline is that Georgia remains one of NATO's closest partners and the uh, support of NATO and NATO allies uh, for Georgia, both the political and practical support, remains as strong as ever. Uh, against the backdrop, of course, of the continued uh, Russian war of aggression against Ukraine, which represents the gravest threat to Euro-Atlantic security. Uh, this year has seen uh, many highlights uh, in the NATO-Georgia relationship. Um, there have been many high-level visits from uh, NATO headquarters to, to Brussels. You mentioned the, the latest one, which took place just this week. Uh, there have also been uh, important meetings of the NATO-Georgia Commission in Brussels, uh, for which high-level Georgian officials have uh, traveled. Uh, Georgia was also present at the latest uh, summit that we held in Vilnius uh, in the summer. Um, so I, I would say that um, the, the dialogue and the practical cooperation uh, continue at a, at to be at a very high level. Um, we celebrated a milestone in our practical cooperation when um, a, a boarding team from the Georgian Coast Guard uh, participated in the NATO um, maritime security operation called Sea Guardian. Uh, that was the first time a partner nation had participated in this particular operation. So uh, it was a historic uh, event in that sense. And also we have continued uh, working on uh, the implementation of the tailored support measures which were agreed at the Madrid summit last year, uh, particularly through the enhanced substantial NATO Georgia package, uh, the SNGP. Um, with regard to um, the special representative's uh, latest visit, this was his second visit uh, to Georgia this year. I think this one uh, was a particularly uh, productive one coming, of course, uh, right uh, after the historic decision uh, by the EU Council to grant Georgia candidate status. So there was a very, uh, I would say, optimistic and positive mood uh, as the backdrop to, to the visit. He was able to see all the uh, senior uh, officials, um, the president, the prime minister, the speaker of parliament, um, the foreign minister, defense minister, as well as opposition uh, representatives. And he engaged in uh, public diplomacy activities as well, meeting with students, meeting with the media um, and interacting uh, with the public broadcaster uh, as well. So um, I think it was a very positive um, uh, visit. One of the key messages and the key outcomes, I think, uh, from the visit is that NATO and the EU are really two sides of the same coin. And I think uh, the special representative underlined that fact. And so he he encouraged uh, the Georgian authorities and also the opposition, all stakeholders, to uh, use the momentum uh, generated by this historic decision to also make progress uh, on the Euro-Atlantic track. Uh, because any progress that Georgia makes towards the EU is also uh, progress that uh, Georgia makes towards eventual NATO membership. Thank you so much for this summary. Um... 
In this context, I would like to ask you about the assessments uh, by some experts and uh, representatives of the opposition who argue that the momentum uh, for Georgia's NATO integration has somewhat waned in recent years. And this perception is shared by some long-standing Georgian partners as well. For example, the Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallas said in an interview with RFL uh, this summer that um, in her view, the leadership of Georgia right now does not really believe in NATO membership so that they don't really push agenda that much. Um, and those who agree with that statement cite various criteria such as uh, the number of visits or NATO integration related messages or lack of thereof and the visibility of this issue from the Georgian political discourse. Um, or sometimes even the rhetoric that is damaging to um, NATO integration goals. Suffice it to recall the Prime Minister's remarks at the Globsec Forum this year when he, um, when asked by moderator why he thought Russia started the war with Ukraine in 2022, said, and I quote, I think everyone knows the reason. One of the main reasons was NATO, NATO enlargement. And this kind of rhetoric, of course, has not gone unnoticed. What do you think of such an assessment of the diminished integration momentum? Does it have uh, uh, value? Well, I think it's important to uh, remember that ever since allies decided that Georgia will become a member of NATO back in uh, 2008 at the Bucharest summit, uh, since then, uh, Georgia has had an annual national program at its disposal, which is really the main instrument it has to get closer to NATO. Uh, and through this ANP process, um, Georgia has a strategic roadmap for reforms on which then uh, allies uh, make uh, recommendations and, uh, gui and provide guidance to Georgia uh, to, to help it um, get closer to the requirements for NATO membership. And um, throughout these years, Georgia has made impressive progress in a range of areas, uh, particularly, of course, in the transformation of its uh, defense and security sector. Uh, however, more needs to be done, um, and we have publicly and privately expressed a concern in recent years at the slowdown uh, of the implementation of key reforms uh, in areas such as um, judicial reform, electoral reform, uh, media freedoms, uh, other uh, fundamental freedoms, uh, democratic oversight of the security sector. Uh, all of these issues are important to allies when it comes to an aspirant country because these are all uh, values that we expect uh, our aspirant uh, partners and our future, uh, future allies to share. Uh, that is why we, we continue to encourage uh, Georgia, not only the government, but all uh, stakeholders to play uh, constructive roles in uh, helping Georgia implement these uh, very difficult but necessary uh, reforms. As I said uh, just a minute ago, uh, when uh, Special Representative Kolomina was in Tbilisi this week, he encouraged uh, his interlocutors to use the momentum generated by the EU candidate status to implement those, uh, those difficult reforms because they will benefit not only uh, Georgia itself, obviously, but also European and Euro-Atlantic integration. Um, the nine steps that the EU has uh, is now expects Georgia to implement in the next year uh, overlap to a very large extent with those reforms that we have recommended through the ANP process. So we, we look forward to, to seeing uh, significant progress in the upcoming months and we stand ready to, to continue supporting Georgia on that path. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed, I think it's sometimes forgotten that NATO is not only a military organization, but it's also a political organization. And therefore, the reforms not only in defense, but also reforms uh, in terms of institution building and democracy and rule of law also matter. If, Absolutely. About, um, uh, because, of course, uh, it's not just the Ministry of Defense of a country or its uh, defense forces that join the alliance. It's the entire state. And that is why um, NATO as a values-based uh, alliance uh, and a political military organization uh, pays a lot of attention to all the areas that you, you highlighted.
The NATO summit in Vilnius this year focused largely on Russia's war in Ukraine. And in the run-up to the summit, there was a talk of it being a possible window of opportunity for Georgia to attract more attention and advance its bid for NATO membership. Um, however, this did not happen. Uh, and um, Georgia came out with a weaker communique language um, and no political or practical deliverables, really. Why do you think that happened? And do you think that Georgia can expect at the next summit something more, uh, the next summit in Washington in 2024? And in that context, would you say Ukraine and Georgia are or are not in the same enlargement basket right now? Well, I think the Vilnius summit was um, a very important summit that was focused on implementation of the historic decisions taken in Madrid uh, at the previous summit. So, of course, as you mentioned, Ukraine featured uh, very prominently on the agenda and in particular, um, allies decided to, to uh, adopt three decisions to take forward the uh, partnership with Ukraine. Uh, firstly, they um, agreed a multi-year package of assistance, which is um, geared towards uh, ensuring Ukraine's inter full interoperability with the alliance. Um, secondly, they established the NATO-Ukraine Council, where Ukraine and all allies sit as equals around the table. And the council has already been used uh, quite extensively. And the, the third big item on the agenda of the summit was uh, China and um, the definition of China as a strategic uh, competitor to the alliance. Um, the uh, very close and deepening relationship with Indo-Pacific partners of NATO was underlined uh, with their presence at the summit as well. Um, and I think it was also important that allies reiterated their commitment to the open door policy, uh, particularly in the context of the uh, recent accession of Finland. And uh, as we hope, the um, very soon, the accession of uh, Sweden as a as the 32nd uh, ally. For Georgia, I think it was uh, very positive that Georgia was at the summit. It attended a uh, special format with the partners at risk, as we call them. Uh, so Georgia, Moldova, Bosnia and Herzegovina, those partners that have been um, granted these tailored support measures uh, last year. And, and also in the communique, Georgia Georgia's aspirations were fully uh, reiterated. Um, the commitment to the Bucharest summit decision that Georgia will be a member in the future was once again reiterated, as it has been at every single summit since. Um, and also the communique talked about the, uh, the need to make progress on reforms, including key democratic reforms. And I think this is significant because, as we already discussed, Allies pay close attention to, to Georgia's uh, uh, progress uh, towards the requirements for eventual NATO membership. Um, looking, at, looking ahead at the next summit, which will again be a historic summit, uh, as it will take place in Washington, D.C., uh, the place where 75 years ago uh, the North Atlantic Treaty was originally signed, uh, this will be a, an anniversary summit, but it will also be a forward-looking summit to uh, get the alliance ready for uh, the near and longer-term future. Uh, and again, we are talking about uh, commitments to strengthening deterrence and defense. Um, we are talking about um, uh, strengthening partnerships and, of course, also uh, strengthening further support to Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, to ensure that Ukraine prevails against Russia's uh, war of aggression. Um, as to Georgia, it's too early uh, to discuss uh, formats because uh, discussions have not started yet on what formats uh, will involve partners uh, at the summit. Of course, uh, partnerships will be one of the focus areas uh, of the summit, and uh, I would expect uh, all of our key partners to be present in some way, shape, or form. But I think it's too early to, to speculate about uh, concrete formats or levels. Um, I think what's important is that Georgia use the time between now and the summit to actually, as we already discussed, demonstrate uh, concrete progress on some of the key reform areas that are um, part of the annual national program process. 
and the, uh, the next annual program, annual national program assessment will be shared uh, by allies uh, with the Georgian authorities uh, early next year. And so we, uh, we hope to see uh, the momentum of the EU decision being carried over into the uh, Euro-Atlantic reform agenda as well. What do you think were the main highlights of the 2023 um, Georgia-NATO relations uh, and uh, uh, the uh, visibility of those relations? I think that this year uh, was again a very uh, eventful year in NATO-Georgia relations and testimony to that um, is the considerable number of high-level visits paid by NATO officials to, uh, to Georgia. Uh, we've had uh, two visits by the Special Representative for uh, the Caucasus in Central Asia, Javier Colomina, which we already uh, discussed. We also had two visits by another uh, Special Representative of the Secretary General of NATO um, for Women, Peace and Security, Ms. Uh, Irene Felin, uh, who came to discuss the implementation and the promotion of the Women, Peace and Security agenda in Georgia. Uh, we've also uh, had a visit by the uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary General, uh, James Apatharai, uh, who came to discuss uh, emerging security challenges and how to strengthen our uh, cooperation in the areas of cyber, uh, hybrid, energy security, and scientific uh, cooperation, for instance. Uh, and of course, just uh, last month, we had a very large-scale visit by the uh, entire NATO military committee. Uh, led by the chair of the military committee, who is the highest ranking um, military official uh, in the alliance. Um, and that, that military committee visit was uh, also very important to take stock of the military to military cooperation that uh, continues apace between NATO and Georgia. Uh, also to visit the, the Joint Training and Evaluation Center, the JTEC, which is a unique institution uh, that Georgia hosts, uh, to observe a, an interagency exercise, uh, Didgori uh, 23, uh, which uh, many, many representatives were impressed by. Uh, and of course, also to discuss with Georgia the implementation of uh, the defense reforms and the transformation of the uh, Georgian defense forces, as well as the interoperability, uh, which um, of course remains high, um, including through uh, many years of uh, uh, jointly operating in environments such as Afghanistan, where the Georgian contribution was uh, very significant and, and highly valued by allies. Uh, and that continues now uh, also in the um, formats of the Operation Sea Guardian, which I mentioned, where Georgia contributes a boarding team. Uh, and also in the NATO Response Force, which, which Georgia supports with some of its uh, capabilities. So um, I think there, are, there have been uh, quite a few highlights. Um, when it comes to the implementation of the SNGP, um, again, we made progress on, on several initiatives, uh, including cyber, uh, secure communications, military engineering, uh, we added two new initiatives on CBRN defense uh, and uh, training facilities and implementation of those uh, has also uh, been starting. So a lot of, a lot of movement, um, both uh, practical, very practical and also uh, political. Um, so I think it's overall it's been a, it's been a productive year and we, we look forward to next year, which will be at least uh, as important a year for both uh, Georgia, of course, with, with the elections coming up, uh, but also with the reform agenda and the, not, the nine steps um, recommended by the EU, and, um, and the uh, 75th anniversary of NATO, as well as the 10th anniversary of the uh, existence of the SNGP in Georgia. We will also be, be sure to mark, uh, mark that appropriately. Thank you very much. You uh, mentioned uh, the Resolute Support mission in Afghanistan, and indeed this was um, a mission where Georgia was the largest per capita and one of the largest uh, troop contributors overall. And it was also a very important element in our integration process uh, into NATO. Now that the um, mission is over, um, do you think uh, Georgia can compensate for this um, 
visibility that it used to have with participating in that mission? Well, I think I've already mentioned that Georgia continues a uh, very strong uh, mill-to-mill -mill cooperation. Um, it continues working on the interoperability between uh, the Georgian Defense Forces and NATO Armed Forces. Um, so it, I think this shows, once again, that Georgia is a reliable contributor to international security. And that is uh, indeed uh, the, the track record that it has built up through, through the many years of, of uh, contributions to NATO-led missions and operations. So um, we, 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 are, um, we always remember that Georgia uh, paid a high price for uh, contributing to our common security in Afghanistan uh, with uh, over 30 um, service members paying the ultimate price. And I think NATO allies uh, are, uh, are very cognizant of that and very appreciative. Um, but the high level of, of continued integration, I think, um, uh, is, makes it clear that the interoperability that has been developed between Georgia and NATO is, uh, remains and has to be further uh, increased, and that's what we are focusing on. Uh, my next question is about the Black Sea, uh, the Black Sea region, which is becoming increasingly important for both the EU and NATO. This is true in terms of hard security, um, as the war in Ukraine has once again demonstrated, but also in terms of energy, trade, and digital connectivity between Asia and Europe. In the case of the EU, the change in attitude towards the Black Sea is reflected in a reorientation of its enlargement policy. For NATO, it is reflected in a, a number of measures of strengthening the um, alliance's eastern flank. Um, the new strategy concept also mentions uh, the importance of the Black Sea. Um, but would you say that NATO is doing enough in this direction? Uh, is there anything more that needs to be done? Indeed, the, um, the new strategic concept, which was agreed at uh, the Madrid summit last year, for the first time ever, uh, mentions the Black Sea. And it, um, it describes the Black Sea as an area of strategic importance for the alliance as a whole. And I think this is a very significant development. Because, of course, um, three NATO allies uh, are literal states of the Black Sea, Turkey, Romania, and Bulgaria. And uh, two literal states are very close partners of NATO, Ukraine and Georgia. So, um, clearly, being mentioned in the second most important document that NATO has, the strategic concept, is significant in itself and uh, is already a significant um, evolution. Now, ever since uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine, and, and by that I mean already the uh, illegal and illegitimate annexation of Crimea back in 2014, ever since then, uh, NATO has increased its presence in and around the Black Sea. And of course, particularly after the, the full-scale invasion began, uh, we have paid even more attention to, to that uh, strategic uh, region. Um, there are, as you know, uh, two new battle groups that have been created uh, in Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, there are more overflights over the Black Sea. Um, the U.S. has deployed additional F-16s to Romania to help with air policing uh, in, um, uh, in, that, in that region. So um, I think it, it shows that NATO is determined to uh, defend every ally uh, and every inch of allied territory. We, we also, um, in Madrid, uh, reflected the uh, Euro-Atlantic aspirations of uh, the countries in the Black Sea region and um, uh, also uh, made a commitment to strengthening their uh, resilience and their defense capabilities further. So I think um, there is increasing awareness of the importance of the Black Sea and also increasing action that is being taken uh, at the concrete level, uh, both within the alliance and, and our planning and in our uh, relations with partners, particularly with uh, the Black Sea partners. My next question is about public diplomacy and countering propaganda, because this is one of the main directions of work of the NATO liaison office and a very important one as well. Um, there is a trend that we are observing that what we used to call Russian propaganda is 
echoed or repeated sometimes by the government authorities themselves. For example, the GD chair Kobahidze said this summer that Georgia should not be envious that Ukraine can be accepted to NATO without the MAP membership action plan, adding, and I quote, if the basis of differentiation is whether a country is at war, we cannot do anything about that. Our collective opposition, the Ukrainian government and number of foreign experts and politicians demanded that, but we wouldn't do that. Repeating the narrative that unnamed foreign forces try to drag for Georgia into war. How do you counter Russian propaganda if it is repeated by the government officials as well? Does this make your job more challenging when countering these kind of narratives? Well, as you pointed out, the NATO Liaison Office, which was opened uh, back in 2010 in Georgia, um, has um, a mandate that includes public diplomacy. It's one of the three key areas of our engagement, I would say, uh, alongside our um, dialogue with a wide range of stakeholders and our support to capacity building programs in Georgia. Public diplomacy is the third pillar that we engage in. And uh, it has always been important. It's even more important now in the, the current context uh, where uh, Russia, of Russia's ongoing war of aggression uh, against Ukraine and the uh, disinformation that accompanies uh, it. Propaganda is not a new phenomenon. Uh, it has been around for centuries. Uh, but of course, with the spread of the uh, digital means of communication, it becomes even more uh, potent and therefore even more uh, crucial to counter these efforts. NATO's basic approach to countering disinformation and propaganda is uh, not to have counter-propaganda, but to uh, basically fight propaganda with facts. Uh, that's what we are doing uh, at the central level uh, through NATO headquarters, which has a very, um, a very good um, effort in terms of the, the NATO website, where we debunk many of the Russian uh, propaganda myths about the alliance. Uh, we also do it here at the local level in Georgia through uh, direct engagement with target audiences, uh, with youth, with um, religious leaders, with minority, ethnic minority communities. Um, we focus a lot on the regions of Georgia because there's a lot of information available in Tbilisi, but uh, perhaps it's more challenging in some of the regions. Uh, particularly those that rely more on some uh, Russian language um, outlets. So we, we try to focus our efforts there. We work also with a range of partners, both from the government and from civil society, in uh, promoting awareness about NATO, uh, promoting awareness about the benefits of NATO-Georgia cooperation, and of course, uh, countering these uh, false narratives, uh, including anti-Western narratives, uh, which are not only an issue in Georgia, they are an issue in many uh, countries, including our own, some of our own countries. That is why this is a, a joint challenge that we also have to tackle jointly, um, including with, uh, with the Georgian authorities. Okay. The Secretary General before the Vilnius summit, as well as his representative, Javier Kalamina, during his visit to Tbilisi in May this year, stressed that NATO believes that uh, members and partners should support Ukraine, uh, as well as maintain sanctions against the aggressor, Russia, um, to not make it easier for Russia to finance and organize its war um, against Ukraine. How do you assess uh, Georgia's efforts in this direction? Indeed, uh, NATO allies um, are fully committed to supporting Ukraine uh, for as long as it takes to ensure that uh, Ukraine prevails against Russia's brutal and unprovoked uh, war of aggression. Um, and we expect partners to do their utmost to uh, support Ukraine in, in, in those endeavors as well. Um, we, we are aware of uh, the different areas in which uh, Georgia is supporting Ukraine, uh, politically, human in uh, humanitarian uh, field, so uh, we encourage Georgia to, to continue and further uh, increase that. Georgia is also part of the Rammstein um, uh, defense uh, support group uh, for Ukraine. Um, we also encourage uh, all of the members of that group uh, to, to do whatever they can 
to help uh, Ukraine. Uh, because as we all know, um, this is the defining uh, moment. Uh, this is a defining conflict uh, of our times. And it's very important, of, obviously, to be on the right side of history on this one. I couldn't agree more. And my last question would be more on a more of a personal note. Um, you have been in Georgia for two years now, I think? Almost. Almost two yes. years? Yes. And two, in February it will be two. Right. Um, so how have your expectations of Georgia fared vis-a-vis the reality? Any surprises there? <laughs> I, well, I, uh, of course, had high expectations uh, of Georgia, having already been acquainted uh, somewhat with your culture and uh, your gastronomy and uh, proud uh, cultural history, um, also having previously visited uh, Georgia. But I think those expectations have been fully met and uh, in some cases even exceeded uh, because, uh, of course, I have now been able to travel uh, around the country, not as much as I'd like, but uh, still uh, as much as I have as I could, and I've been really uh, blown away by some of the uh, amazing uh, parts of, of of Georgia that I've seen, the people that I've met and interacted with. Uh, I've been particularly inspired, I think, by the uh, young generation uh, and the uh, determination that they have to to build a Georgia that is uh, uh, even more modern, even more uh, aligned with Western uh, values and, and really part of the European and Euro-Atlantic family. So uh, it's been a privilege to be able to contribute to Georgia's uh, uh, integration into that family where it belongs. And I look forward to continuing uh, to do that in the, in the months and years to come. Thank you very much and um, Happy New Year. Uh, and um, thank you for this interview again. Thank, thank you. you very much and all the best and happy holidays to, to, all, to you and to all of your viewers and, and readers. Thanks. By the way, I am one of the readers of uh, Civil G and I very much appreciate the, the, professional, uh, the professionalism of your team and the, the great work that you're doing. So all the best in continuing thank that uh, next year. Thanks. I appreciate that.